Hi everyone, I am Carrie Viscalonis with Reset Brain and Body here for today's Mental Health Monday series. I want to talk to you today about hustle culture. We are in a culture where it is so normal to be on the go and rushing from one thing to the next and with the school year starting right around the corner, if not already started for you and your family, it seems like even though COVID is still going on, we tend to just be busy again and almost over glamorize being busy. You know, during the shutdown 18 months ago, we got into this state of um, slowness, stagnation, and some of you probably fought it and felt very, very re restless. And a lot of people also found a new equilibrium and it felt really sustainable. And so I wanna help you create a sustainable school year, one where you can still do all the things, but maybe not burn out while doing so and manage that feeling of overwhelm that comes with the sense of obligation to do more and get your kids more and more involved in things. So number one, check in with your family. What does everyone want to do? What are the priorities? Check in with each family member and say, okay, for this school year, or maybe you know, segment it down for the next six months, what's important to you? What sports, activities, school programs, after school activities, clubs, uh, fitness classes, hobbies, what is important to you? What friends do we wanna see? Are there any weekend trips we wanna take? Everyone gets one or two that they put into a big pile. Everyone writes it on a piece of paper, throw it into the middle of the kitchen table, and then the family sets the priorities. But first, check in with the family. Don't assume that no one has an opinion. We have to give everyone a voice, and that means you too, Mama. Make sure that you too have a voice in what's important and where the priorities are for you and your family and for what you wanna do and what you wanna have an experience in in the next six months. Number two, set those boundaries though, because just because everyone might have things that they wanna do or feel like is important, the way that I make decisions, and I tell this to clients all the time, if it is not a full body yes, then it is a no. You really want a full body yes. You wanna feel it everywhere, and you almost wanna lean forward when making a decision that is for you, that you know is right, that is, is something that you should absolutely do, versus feeling this constriction, this retreating away. And it's very simple. If you can even just ask yourself when it comes to what you wanna eat for lunch, and if you're pulling yourself forward or if you're feeling yourself retreat back, it's an intuitive check with, is this for me or is this not for me? So setting that boundary of full body yes or it's a no. And having each family check in with themselves on that. Okay, so you first check in with the family, what do you guys wanna do? What's important? But then, is this actually good for you? Is this actually what you wanna do? Or is it just because you're comparing to Johnny down the street? Or because, Mrs. Susan down the street also does this and you feel like you should do it too, right? All right, number three, remember that you know your family best and release the shoulds, release the comparisons. What does your family uniquely need? Because the thing is, is that your family might've been really busy all summer. You might've traveled, you might've been super active and so your family actually needs to retreat this season. Your family needs to have more quiet time your family needs to be inside more, or maybe it's the absolute opposite. But you know your family best. You know your children best. You know if they need to be involved in five sports or no sports or just one. You know if they need to go try something new and change a new group of friends, or if they need to stay with the same kids that they've been with for the last five years because they need that consistency. You know them best. Number four, do your best with safety and trust that the best is the all that you can do. I'm gonna repeat that. Do your best with safety, but trust that your best is all that you can do. Again, we are entering into unknown territory and there are so many things that you probably already have done as a mama to try and feel safe for your family. And there's a limit because there are so many things you can't control. So at some point you just have to rely on trust that you did the best that you could. Remember that.
always. And just keep trusting that you are doing the best that you can with safety in a world that you can't control. Number five, stick to things that are predictable. This helps manage the uncertainty, your anxieties, and that rushing that we have. So if you know that a certain uh, sports league that your child is involved in tends to have last minute practices added or the game schedule is all over the place, well, maybe that's not a good fit for your family this year. Maybe that's not gonna fit with your schedule. Maybe that's not a full body yes. And so you're instead gonna do something, an activity that feels like it can be predictable, that you guys can plan for and know, okay, it's the same time every week. That just feels softer. That feels gentler on our family. That just feels like it can fit better into our routine because we're choosing not to rush this season. We're choosing certainty because the world's already uncertain enough and my anxiety can't handle more uncertainty. So don't feel like you have to make sacrifices just because an organization is not organized. Maybe it will be again next year, it's okay. Number six, schedule self-care. And I know you might say, I don't have time for that and I wanna sleep and blah, blah, blah. I get it, I get it, I get it. Once a week, schedule alone time not only for yourself, but also for the whole family. This is really important. If your child no longer naps, right? We say quiet time. Everyone in the family needs quiet time. You, as a parent, needs quiet time. Ideally, every single day, but at a minimum, every week, every single member of the family needs quiet time. You need alone time, you need to recharge, you need to self-soothe. What does that look like in a replenishing way? Schedule it in so everyone knows, again, it's predictable. It's part of the routine. It's something you can look forward to as well. And lastly, number seven, and this kind of wraps everything up, establish consistency. Like, for example, Friday night pizza night, or Friday night you get together with all the neighbors, or anything else that you can say, this is non-negotiable, and this is part of our family's commitment to our schedule and to ourselves and to each other. And it is something that nothing else will get in the way of it. No last minute baseball game, no last minute invitation to go to Six Flags. This is what we are doing because our children need the predictability. The parents need the predictability. And again, it's something that we can look forward to and releases that rushing, that uncertainty, that anxiety. So much of hustle culture is this incessant adrenaline that keeps us just being insatiable that we need more and more and more and more to keep up and so we need to establish more of that consistency we need to slow everything down which means we say these are non-negotiable parts of our week we expect everyone to be here you do not get to go to your friend's house for a sleepover because this is what we do as a family that sets those boundaries that sets those priorities that sets the values in the family all right, what questions, comments you have? I'm gonna answer one. When childcare is a struggle, I find that I have such a hard time pouring into myself more often. Yes, so absolutely. When the kids are around, it's really hard to schedule in that me time. And this is the age old issue where we say, okay, we'll wake up before the kids or you have it after the kids go to sleep, right? But you're exhausted, I totally understand it. Sleep is so precious. And so it's, well, how can you squeeze in those little moments? Or is me time, is, a, is that recharging time doing something that's playful with your child? Something that feels rejuvenating with your children. Doing something a little bit different. Maybe something that feels like self-care is saying, you know what? We're going to go down to the museum today. We're going to do something that is a little bit spontaneous because that actually is self-care for me, is getting out of the routine. Don't feel like you have to be so regimented because self-care can look like a lot of different things because you need also play. All right, what other comments do we have? Yep, Friday night pizza night seems like it's a huge thing for everyone. We do Friday night pizza night. Um, one thing that we've been trying to do in our family is getting together a couple families and saying, okay, every Friday night, we just dump over at someone's house, four families, dump over at someone's house, we don't need sitters, 
We just get over there at five o'clock. We order pizza for everyone, let the kids just run around. We just are outside and it's a great way to get that social connection. And then everyone leaves by seven. It's a quick two hours, kids are in bed, but the parents had the social outlet. The kids get to like run out their energies on a Friday night and you get a little bit of that consistency as well and something to look forward to weekly. All right, Deanna says, I love number seven, establish consistency. I often let plans be interrupted because something else comes up. I love the idea of this non-negotiable, especially as my kids get older and will want to do their own thing. Yes, right? You don't want to feel like you are losing them. And so the earlier that you set that routine and those expectations and say, no, like this is what we do as a family every Friday night. I don't care if you have a party, you can go to it late. I don't care if you're 17 years old and you have a date or you have a boyfriend or whatever, like this is what we do as our family. And it can feel really grounding for everyone, right? Everyone knows, we know that family dinners, for example, is really important for everyone to be seen and heard and actually connect on a day-to-day -day basis. And so even though the kids get older and their lives get busier, it's important to still have that consistency, that grounding centering point where everyone just comes together. All right, everyone, I love all these comments. I love that you love this topic. Drop any more comments, suggestions, anything else that you do and your family to wrestle hustle culture. Have a great and successful week.